Hello everybody, it's Wendy and today we are going to do a tutorial of how to make pendants out of our little resin seashell necklaces, resin seashell pendants that we made the other day. So uh, if you watched the first video, I did several little whoops, seashell pendants made from resin and um, charms and glitter and stuff like that. Here's another one. I'm just showing you a few of the ones I've done. And there's a mermaid and an octopus. Here's a mermaid and some glass glitter. So I did several of these on the tutorial the other day, and today I'm going to show you how to take one and turn it into a pendant. Um, so I've got a craft show. Well, I've got like three craft shows coming up here in the next few weeks. So I am trying to um, get a bunch of stuff ready. So I have all of these seashell pendants. There they are. <laughs> They're all laying there ready to be made <laughs> independent. So um, that's what I'm trying to get done. So I'm going to do this today and I thought I would show you how to do it. So the first thing you're going to need is your pendant, obviously. Um, you can watch the video. Um, I'll link it below in the description box of how to make these. Um, they're very, very easy. Um, you'll need a bead cap if you want to cover up the hole that you drill you will need whoops a hand drill which is this little contraption and these work very well for drilling the holes through these pendants if you can see that one maybe if the camera will focus yeah see the little hole there they work very well for drilling the holes through the pendants now um, it takes some effort to get them drilled through. Um, I have actually been struggling for days to get these drilled through. And there's one here that I actually can't get through. And I'm probably going to have to get Chris's real drill. And hopefully it won't crack the shell. I don't like to use the real drill. Um, because, like I said, it's a little bit rough on these. And it can crack the shell. But some of these pendants... Um, yeah, there's a couple that I just have not been able to, to drill through with the hand drill. But this is a great little tool to have for these kind of things. I've drilled holes in shells, tons and tons of holes in shells, and um, I have not had any trouble really too much up to date. So it's a good thing to have. Hold on, let me put Sadie on the bed. You want on the bed? Sadie wants on the bed. There you go. Okay. All right, so you're going to need the hand drill. You're going to need some beads of your choice, you know, whatever colors you want to go with. Um, I'm using this Coriana chain. I love this stuff because, and let me grab, I will show you a necklace that I've done with it. I like to bead just a little ways up the chain. So here's a necklace that I've done with the Coriana chain. And if you use this chain, it's kind of beautiful and decorative, and you don't really have to bead all the way up the sides. And I like this look. I think this is pretty. Um, I don't really like the look of beads all the way up the sides of my necklaces. Now, I do them that way because other people do like them that way. But I, especially for these seashell ones, because I really want this to be the focal and I don't want a lot of distraction from the focal. I just like to be just a little ways up the side. So I'm going to be using the Coriana chain for that. It's great. I love it. Um, beads of your choice. Like I said, you'll need some jump rings. You'll need a fairly large jump ring to go through the hole on your pendant. Um, and then you'll need a jump ring to attach your lobster claw onto the chain with. And you'll need a jump ring to hook your lobster claw to um, to close it. So, and one more thing I forgot to get out, so let me see if I can find it real quick, are the connectors for the Coriana chain. And I just had them a few minutes ago. Here they are. Okay. And then to, to finish off this Coriana chain, you need some of these connectors right here, these little things. And I really do hate these. <laughs> I hate using them because... Wow, I just struggle with them sometimes, getting them closed the right way, but that's the best way that I've found to finish this chain, so you need a couple of those little guys right there. Um, I've got some spacer beads, I've got some daisy spacers here, just for decorative purposes, and a head pin. I always like to put bead dangles on the ends of my um, pendants, like this. So that's what we're going to do with that. And of course you'll need your assortment of pliers, round nose, chain nose, flat nose, 
cutters, the whole bit. All right, so let's get started. So um, the first thing I did was drill my hole through again. And you take your little hand drill and you just drill it and it takes time and effort, but the, re the reward is good. So I drilled right through there and I took some E6000 glue and I glued my bead cap just for decorative purposes. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and open up my jump ring and put my jump ring on just to make sure that it's gonna fit. Okay, so let's get this through here. And I am really not the best at filming, as I've said a thousand times. So I do the best I can, but my videos are not professional quality. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Okay, my jump ring's glue is not totally dry. So it's gonna, or not jump ring, but my bead cap glue is not totally dry. So it's wanting to lift off a little bit. I'm just gonna try to get this jump ring through. There we go. You really do have to use a fairly large jump ring on these, um, otherwise you're going to distort the small ones trying to get them open and get them on and get them closed. It just doesn't work. Okay, so here's what we have. We've got a nice little jump ring on there. If your jump ring is facing this way, you know, with the, not the ring, the open part facing you, if it's facing the wire towards you, then you're going to be able to put your chain through it. Um, so you don't don't need more than one jump ring for that. All right, so we're gonna take our chain and measure off a little. I usually do, I'll hold it up to my neck just to see where it's gonna fall on. And I don't measure real precisely because I'm gonna put an extender on here. Oh, that's another thing. You do need a little piece of extender chain. I don't think I said that. But let's see what it usually comes out to. I just kind of eyeball it. It looks like this is about, let's see, we've got 12. Uh, this chain's about 26 inches. I've measured out about 26 inches here of chain. So that's, you know, usually where it falls pretty good on me. And then I'll put an extender on it so somebody can extend it if they need to. So you're just going to insert your chain into your jump ring. And you'll have this. Now, you can leave it like this if you want to. Um, I mean, this chain is pretty, and it's meant to be seen. So, um, you know, that's pretty if you want to do it like that. But I'm going to beat up the sides a little bit. So, let me, whoops, nope, I didn't want to do that. Let me scoot this back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. All right, so... You guys know how I work. If you've watched my videos, it's totally trial and error. Um, I'm just going to, I never plan this out in advance, or I do. I do plan things out in advance, but they never work out the way I want them to. So I end up changing things up. So what we're going to do is take our chain and our beads. I do like to start with small beads at the beginning, usually. Um... But with these jump rings being so big, you almost kind of need a big bead there to hold. Otherwise, your small beads are just going to flow through here. So you kind of need a big bead on either side to hold this in place. So I think I'm going to use these silver ones first. And just put... And this chain goes right through. It's made to bead right on this chain. I love this stuff. Going right through the holes on the beads. Okay? And see, when you get it on there, it's going to kind of hold it in place because these beads are too big to go through that jump ring. And then I'm going to start with some pink. I have these little sparkly pink beads that I think match the glitter really well in this. So we'll go ahead and put a couple of those on. Now, I'm not going to bead all the way up the sides of the chain. Again, I, I don't really like that look. I like to just do a little. So I'm going to do a couple little daisy spacers. Okay, and they go right on. This chain is awesome. You can get this chain. I've seen it at Joann's, and I've seen it at Michael's. No, Hobby Lobby. Probably Michael's has it too. It's a little bit expensive, but if you use your coupon, and this little spacer is 
He's going on, but not very easily. So let me see if I can get him off. There we go. They might be too small for that. I do have a bigger, a couple bigger spacers here. I'll use those in a second. I'll put a little bead on next. That'll be good instead. See, that's how I work. <laughs> Plan B. That didn't work. Let's try something else. This will work. Okay. So, here's what we have so far. Really cute. And then I kind of wanted a lighter color pink bead on there, too. I didn't want just all the hot pink. So, let's try this and see what it looks like. These little pearls. And the pearls are kind of iffy. Sometimes they go on this chain, sometimes they don't. You just have to kind of mess around with them and find the ones with the bigger holes that you can find. Okay. So that's what we've got so far. And then I think I had some bigger sparkly beads here. I might do them or I may just do the other silver ones. Let me look here. So these are really big. I don't want to go that big, I don't think, but I might. Here's some smaller ones. I kind of like the sparkly silver. They're pretty. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do another one of these hot pink guys. Okay, and here's what we've got. It's cute. Um, let me do a silver spacer again, the small ones. I need just a little bit more on here, I think. Let's do these guys. Little pearls. Oops. And they don't want to go on there. There we go. Okay, so there's what we have so far. And really, I don't like to go much higher than that, but I do like to finish it with a small bead. So I think I might finish it with one of these hot pink pearls. We'll see how they look on there. If I can get them through there. Uh, maybe not. These may be too big for the chain. Oh no, there's one. Okay. I guess you just have to find the ones with the biggest holes in them, which those two don't have. So let's dump out a few more. Nope. Okay, surely there's one more that'll work on here. This guy will. Okay. And how's that? That looks pretty good. Really cute. Okay. And I actually may stick another tiny silver bead on the very tip, the very top of this. Okay. And one more. Okay. All right. So that's what we've got so far. Really cute. Let's push those beads down. Okay, so that's so far. Now we're going to finish off the ends. Let me move some of those beads out of the way. Because knowing me, I'll knock them over and they'll go everywhere. I did that at work the other day. I had a whole tray of beads in my hand and dropped them. Yeah, they went everywhere. My boss was like, well, that happens sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> she took it quite well. I was thinking, yeah, it happens a lot of the times with me, unfortunately. <coughs> Too often. <laughs> I'm so clumsy. All right. Okay, now you get your little end pieces here. Actually, we should have made our bead dangle before we put all these away. So let me grab a couple more beads out. I'm going to make the bead dangle. And I definitely want it to have the hot pink, the silver and the other pink on it. So let's do, we'll do a couple of the hot pinks. That silver guy and one of these pinks. Okay. 
So you just take your little head pin and put your beads on however you want them to go. And these little pearls, these may not go on this at all. Yeah, they're not going to. Unfortunately, that's aggravating. Okay, um, these little pearls aren't going to go on this head pin. Oh, wait, this one will, maybe. Okay, it did. I guess it has a bigger hole. Okay. All right, so let's just put these on like this. You put them on however you want them to go. Whoops. And there we have it. And you take your flat nose pliers and bend it in a 90 degree. And then I usually leave about a quarter of an inch. Cut that off. Take my round nose, get down on the very end, and roll it back. Okay, and there's your little loop. Alrighty, so now we're going to put these ends on here. This, this I hate. I really hate it. Okay, the easiest way I found to do it is to take this little tabby thing right here and hold it in my fingers like this. Put this chain in here and I leave a little bit hanging out so I can grab onto it just to hold it in place. And just lay it in there. I hope you can see what I'm doing. This is hard. And then you take your pliers and you bend it down over the chain and squeeze it as tight as you can. <laughs> okay, now you got to flip it around and we've got to bend the other side down. And that worked surprisingly well this time. Usually mine do not bend down like they should. Okay, so you squeeze it, and you squeeze it, and you squeeze it every which way that you can squeeze it, and you make sure that it's super tight. Pull on your chain, okay? Don't make sure that it's really tight, and then you trim off your little excess chain here with your cutters. And you want to try to trim it close because you definitely don't want it poking anybody. But one thing I did the other day is I accidentally trimmed the little loop on there <laughs> instead of the chain. And then I had to redo it. So, just try to get any little pieces of the chain that are sticking up out of there. The reason I'm doing, making this, I've got a little sharp piece right there. There we go. And I want to get that off. I don't want it to poke anybody. Okay. Alright, so there's your little end. That's how it works. And you got to do the other side. So again, put your chain in there so it kind of sticks out the top and you can grab it. Grab onto the little tabby thing. Take your pliers and fold it over and press like as hard as you can press it. Flip it around. Fold the other side over. Again, press as hard as you can. And you can even... I grab it and press on the sides just to make sure they're down really good and then pull on your chain and make sure it's not going anywhere and then trim. I'm trying to make sure I'm not trimming the loop. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, pull on it, make sure it's solid. So you should have one of those on each end just like that these little now they're gonna cross just like that okay so then you're gonna take your big um, your big jump ring put your extender chain on put it on one end of your thingy here your little necklace close it up really good and make sure that your jump ring closes perfectly because these are thin and you don't want that to slip out. Take your other jump ring. Put your lobster on. And your other end. Sadie is, I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> she's making all kinds of noises in the background. Close it up really good. And there you have it, your lobster. Now let's put our little bead dangle on. Just open up your loop that you made. Put it on the end of your 
extender chain and close it up. Make sure it's closed really good. I usually take and try to squeeze this in just to make sure. There we go. And there you have it. So you can clasp your little lobster onto your hook and you've got an adorable little necklace that is actually very unique. I've not seen anyone else pouring resin in seashells to make pendants. So maybe they have, but I have not seen it on YouTube or anything. I'll have to look and see. But, um, you know, it's unique. Not everybody's going to have something like this. And I'm hoping they sell really good at my craft show. <laughs> so we'll see. Like I said, I've got like three craft shows coming up. So I'm hoping that these will sell really well. I think they're really cute. This one is a little um, almost younger person-ish maybe. Let me grab a couple of my others and I'll show you kind of what I've got here. Like I said, I've been making tons of them for this craft show, and here's one. This is just a piece of sea glass. Actually, that's backwards. This is just a piece of sea glass and a um, lure, a piece off of a fishing lure and a charm, and I just put regular chain on this one because I thought it looked almost a little masculine, so I didn't want to do beading on it because a guy could wear that. So there's that. And then, let me see if I can do this. They're tangled up a little bit because I just grabbed them all off the doorknob. I have them hanging on a doorknob over there till I get them on cards. And then here's another one. So that one, I just put a few little beads on. I didn't want very many. Um, but it's just a seashell with some pearls on there. A bead cap on the top. There's the back of it. I put a little pearl up in there. Um, there's its little bead dangle so there's like another one Let's see what else so you know these look very i think these look like adults would wear that pink one looks a little girlish but you know it's all in what you like so this one is a twistier shell and i just glued some crystals on it and a, this is just a little bead with a crystal glued in the middle and I put a little dangle on there so that's that one. I know you guys have seen these before. You saw them when I, I think I showed them when I made them, but I didn't show, I haven't shown the finished product yet. Here's another one. This one I did not want to add a whole lot to. So I just put it for, just on the chain, just like this. I thought it was pretty just kind of on its own, like that. I may glue a pearl in there, but I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> I think I'm just going to leave it. This one's different a little bit. It's just a flat shell that I glued crystals on in a swirly pattern with a pearl. And again, I didn't bead on it just because I don't bead on all of them. You know, this one I think didn't need anything up the sides. And I think if I put things up the sides, it would have detracted from the focal. So I didn't. Let's see, here's one that I did bead on. I'll show some of the ones that I have beaded on. If I can get them loose here. They're all wanting to tangle up. Okay, here we go. I may have shown this one before. I can't remember. But here, I glued a little starfish on him and then just beaded a little bit up the sides on this guy. Um, and another thing you can do, you can paint these shells with clear nail polish and it makes them shiny. I didn't really want to do that on this one. Here's a bead dangle for it. Um, I just wanted this one to look, you know, its natural shell self. <laughs> There's that. Let's see. Here's another beaded one. This one here. Um, whoops. I did some beading on it a little bit up the side. But see, I don't go very far up. It has some crystals glued on, some glitter. And it's little bead dangle there. And then I had a couple here that I put on leather, black leather, because I thought they looked a little masculine, so I wanted to um, make something that maybe the guys could wear. So here's one with a, um, you know, it's just on a leather cord with the finished, but that's that one. And here's another 
one that the guys could wear. It's just a turtle. We've got some black pearls in there. Um, that shell I think is really pretty on the inside. Now see, you can tell on this one, I did coat the inside with the clear nail polish. Can you see how shiny? I did not do the outside. So that's the difference it makes. Um, but these, I put on the leather cord because I thought they looked manly <laughs> on the cord. Um, here's another one that's a little different. This is a mermaid sitting in there in the shell, and I just used a regular chain on her. So, didn't do anything fancy with that one. Um, here's a beaded one. This is a flip-flop. I like this one a lot. I think it's cute little flip-flop charm in there. Beat it up a little on the sides of that one. And you got your little bead dangle there. So, so that's the seashell pendants. They're really a lot of fun to make. Um, I've had a ton of fun dealing, you know, making these different. They're, the seashells are also different and so beautiful, and you can do so many different things with them. Um, so yeah, I've really, really had a lot of fun doing this. So, um, hopefully, you you guys can make your own. They're a lot of fun to make. Um, and visit me on my website. I don't have these up on the website right now because I'm getting ready, like I said, to take them to craft shows. But there's a lot of other jewelry up on the website. And that's my, it's beadonawirejewelry.com. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and there's my contact information, so get in touch with me. Um, like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'd love to have you. And share it with your friends. Um, share my website with your friends, please, please. I'd really like to get my website up and, you know, um, running and selling some jewelry on there. I haven't sold a lot on there yet, um, but I would love to <laughs> um, and be able to, to make that, you know, more of a um, focal point in my life is being able to sell on the website. So, um, yeah, but anyway, I will be back later. I'm supposed to receive my, um, budget bead box today. And if I do, I will be back with a tutorial on that or not a tutorial, uh, an unboxing on that. And, um, I also have a little haul coming from bargain bead box. They did a 50% off, um, coupon. And so I ordered some things on there. So I will share that with you when it comes. So anyway, you guys have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.